What are you hearing right now about where your draft stock is at? Well, you know, you hear a lot of things right now. It's, it's still kind of early, but, you know, you hear late lottery, you hear mid-first round, but, you know, I just can't wait to, to get into these workouts. And that, that, that's when you can really find out, you know, where you're at uh, in this process. But, you know, right now it's still kind of early. You know, even the lottery has went out, but it's still kind of early to see where you went out. But uh, I think after these workouts, you can kind of get a good feeling of where you're going to go. How much does it matter to you where you go in the draft? Well, it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, if I was to go uh, lottery, mid first round, late first round, second round even, you know, just to be in the NBA, just to get the opportunity uh, to be in the NBA and, and prove to people. You see so many people, you see the Michael Reds and Carlos Boozers that, you know, win the second round, but, you know, since they had the opportunity to play in the NBA and the chance to, you know, show the world and show these GMs what they can do, you know, uh, it really helped them out. And I, I always say, if you, if you can play basketball, no matter where you draft that, and and you get on the court and show your abilities, people will notice. Do you feel like you're ready to step in from day one and be a starting point guard in the NBA? I believe so. You know, I did two years at college. I learned a lot. You know, I came in as a freshman, thrown right into the fire. You know, with, with only playing six guys in the rotation, so I learned a lot on the fly. You know, that, that kind of advanced me one year in my learning process. So I think, you know, I'm really ready to go in and, and learn, learn from these veteran guys in the NBA and really step in and, and be a leader and, and, and lead my team. So you went from being a mid to late first rounder uh, to a lottery pick in just a matter of a couple of weeks, really, with an unbelievable performance in the Big East tournament and then a strong showing in the NCAA tournament. Do you think that was a product of people just not knowing your game, or did you really step up there in those, during those weeks? Well, I think uh, when you come to those the NCAA tournament, the Big East tournament, those are national stages. Those are stages where every game is on ESPN and, and the whole world can see you. Uh, and when you get on a stage like that and you perform uh, the way I performed or the way anybody will perform like that, people are going to catch notice and see, you know, this guy has been doing it day in and day out. You know, I've been playing like that since the beginning of the season, but the difference was, was it was on a national stage and in a crunch time. You know, Big East, uh, the Connecticut game, you know, everybody was watching that game or uh, the NCAA tournament, everybody's watching the NCAA tournament. So I think when you just get on a big stage and you play the way you can play, everybody's going to notice. Right. Um, if I'm an NBA GM, let's say I'm the Milwaukee Bucks drafting a 10, I'm looking for a point guard, and I got a bunch of point guards on my list, why do I take you over someone else? Well, you know, uh, I'm going to come in, I'm going to work hard, um, I'm not going to complain about anything, I'm going to do uh, whatever they want me to do, you know, I'm going to get in and, and get the right players the ball, I'm not worried about getting a shot off, or I'm worried about winning, you know, that's the main thing that drives me winning, you know, a lot of people might say, you want to come in and you want to average this or you want to get rookie of the year, but you know, my main goal in playing basketball my whole life uh, was winning, and not only with that, that winning, I bring a lot of intensity and a lot of emotion to the game that, you know, a lot of people might bring, you know, some people might say it's bad that I am so emotional, but the core but it's just my just my will to win that fires me up so so much. But um, I think I'm just going to bring in leadership qualities, and uh, I can lead by example, and I can also lead vocally. Do you see yourself being more of a scorer or more of a passer in the NBA? Well, you know, at the college level at Syracuse, you know, I get hit with this question a lot. Uh, but at Syracuse, I had to score. You know, if I would score ten points a game at Syracuse, we wouldn't have won a lot of games. So uh, I think that's that's the that's a uh, intangible that all great point guards have. You look at a Chris Paul, Tony Parker. You know, whenever they have to go out there and score thirty points, they can get you thirty on any given night. But if it's a night for them to be a facilitator, get David West the ball, get Tim Duncan the ball, they can do that as well. But I think any great Great point guard in the NBA has to be able to score. What kind of defender do you think you're going to be in the NBA? There's a lot of people that might have some concerns about that. Do you think that's unfounded? Well, you know, I came into college uh, being a scrappy defender. I was known uh, for being a defender in, in high school and going to Syracuse. We played a lot of zones, so, you know, you really couldn't see see my defensive abilities. Uh, it was kind of hidden in the zone, but uh, that's one thing I can't wait to get to these workouts and play against, you know, NBA talents and, and show these GMs that I can really get out to defensively and, and lock guys up. Uh, what kind of NBA player do you think you're going to be in four or five years down the road? I mean, what what do you think your role is going to be? Well, you know, I think I'm going to come in and, uh, you know, just be the guy that, that facilitates everything, be a guy that keeps the engine room running, you know, just the motor of the team, you know, energy, high energy guy that's going to going to push the ball, push the offensive tempo and get everybody the ball in, in situations. And uh, and when it's my time to score, to hit a wide open shot, you know, I'm going to do that. But, you know, coming in, I, I try not to look down the road. I try to look in the future, in the present right now. And uh, I just see myself coming in as a guy that's going to set guys up and keep the offense running. What are some of the things that you learned from uh, Coach Beheim in your two years at Syracuse? We know you learn a lot from a guy, a Hall of Fame coach like that, that's been been in the basketball game for over 30 years. Uh, uh, he even 
went went to the Olympics and coached, you know, the best players in the world. So, you know, one thing I learned is how to control your emotion on the court. You know, coming in as a freshman, you know, I was an emotional roller coaster. I would show my emotions, you know, right on my sleeve. Every time something was going wrong, you could see something was going wrong. If, if everything was good, you know, I'm out there uh, screaming and things like that. But he, he really showed me that as a point guard, you got to stay level-headed. You got to stay, you know, uh, into the game. You got to stay poised at all times. And that's, that's a big thing I got out of him. How tough of a decision was it for you to leave college for the NBA? Well, it was real tough. It was one of the uh, the toughest decisions of my life. You know, not only was I making the decision for myself, but just making the decision for my family, getting them in the right position. But uh, I, I always uh, look back when I was younger, and I see guys that was in the same situation as me, and I'll be like, man, why is he even thinking about this? Why don't he just go to the NBA? Or why is he even thinking about NBA? Why don't he just stay in college? But, you know, when you're in the driver's seat and you have to make that decision, decision the decision is so much harder. I was waking up days, you know, full set on coming back to school. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not even going to test boards. I'm going to come back to school. And then the next day, I'll be like, I'm ready for the NBA. So it was just like that all the time until, you know, it came a time where it was consistent where I'm like, you know, I really should test awards and, and try my NBA abilities. And that's when I came with my decision. Any goals for your rookie season? No, I, I would love to, you know, go in and, and, and make my team a winner and be on a winning team and, you know, really compete for national, for a championship and, and get to the playoffs. And, you know, not only that, but I would love to play well. I wouldn't, would say, you know, I wouldn't want to play well. I'd be lying to you. But I would love to play well and just, just make the playoffs and have a chance to win a championship. Johnny, you've been great. Thank you so much for your time and uh, best of luck here in the next month or so, okay? Thanks, John. Thanks.